All right, don't have a Time Crunch Thursday episode for you guys this week because you guys have been asking and requesting for a tutorial on this video right here, the time-lapse mural video that we uploaded earlier this week. So instead of a Time Crunch Thursday, I'm gonna just walk you guys very quickly on how we actually made uh, this video, the effect that went into it. It's very easy, very simple. All right, I hope you guys have watched our time-lapse tutorial on how to make a time-lapse and going through After Effects to finish it. If not, click on the link, go check it out. Um, I'm gonna show you an update to that technique. We shot this on a Canon, um, and what happens with a Canon, when you reach 9,999 frames, it resets itself back to zero, or back to one, on the very next frame. And this is great because it lets you shoot forever, yada, 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 but the problem when you go to After Effects is it creates two different image sequences, which really isn't that big of an issue because if we select both of these, drag them down to our new composition, make a single composition, and make sure we sequence the layers one second or one frame still duration go ahead click OK now these will come in sometimes they'll be in the right order sometimes they won't you just drag them around until they're in the correct order for your desired time-lapse now in order to do this effect I'm actually going to need to pre-compose these so I'm going to select both of them and do command Apple or shift C and that's gonna make a pre-comp now I'm gonna make this um, day one because this was the first day click OK and now I've got my pre-comp and that's what it looks like, it's pretty cool. So to do this pr effect properly, I need to basically take the left wall and the right wall and separate them. Because what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be isolating the walls from each other, making them into their own um, composition. And then using the corner pin effect, I'm going to stretch these corners up. So that way I can see it as if it was flat, as if I was looking at it straight on. Um, it'll make a lot more sense if you've seen the video and once I've done the tutorial. So I need a left and a right wall. So selecting the comp, I'm going to do Apple D and that's going to duplicate it. And I'm going to take the first one, hit return, and I'm going to name this left. And I'm going to go down to the next one, right, hit return, and name this one right. So I have my two comps, left and right, and I want to isolate the left wall first. So hitting the tilde key, it's next to the one, I'm going to make this full screen zoom in here to the middle, press spacebar to get my hand tool so I can move this around. And it's kind of hard to see what's going on in here. Where is the corner specifically? So if I do Command Option Control 8, I'm gonna invert my screen, press G to bring up the pen tool. I can see, I can see that corner a little bit easier. So there we go. And now if I'm trying to scroll really far across, it's kind of difficult. So I'm just gonna zoom out and zoom back in. A little bit easier there. A little trick for you, and we'll go ahead and set that down. So now that we're in there, I'm gonna uninvert the colors and tilt the key to get out, and M to bring up the mask, and I want to turn it to none. Now the reason I have that is we have just this layer. I want to be able to come in here press V to bring up our pen tool, and we need to reposition this just a little bit. Not too much, but just enough, so that way, see how this right here is going a little bit over into the white? Now these are really wide angle lens, so that's gonna happen, and we don't need to correct for that because it's such a little part of the image, it really doesn't matter. Same thing's happening down here, and it matters even less down on the bottom because the painting technically stops here. So anything that's below that is just kind of gravy. So we've got that, perfect. So now that is the left wall, and I'm gonna select down here, grab the mask, and copy it. Go to the right side and paste that mask on to the right. We'll turn the right side on, press M for the mask, and we're gonna set them both to add. Oh, that's right, it's just that side. So we'll go to none, and uh, what we need to do is we need to, on the right side, hide the left side. We're going to grab these two, and drag them over here. Now the reason I'm doing this is not because I'm lazy and I don't want to make another mask, but because we want this center line to be exactly the same. Now if I didn't get it perfectly in the corner, making sure that the same line, we're using the same line for both masks, kind of eliminates that worry that uh, we didn't get it perfect. So I'm gonna come over here, and again we're gonna zoom in and align this side, come down here and align that side. Perfect. All right, so if we set this back to add, that's, turn it on the left wall, 
this is what we're looking at. So now that I've got these two separated, I'm going to use a series of pre-comps to make the corner pin effects the most effective. Now, um, you can see that there's a little bit of overlap here uh, between the two layers. So if I go ahead and select both of these, bring up the mask properties, and set the expansion to one, and same with this side, set the expansion to one, you'll see that it covers that up perfectly. So, and it, that little bend that we saw up at the top, I mean, it fixes that. Um, this does not need to be you know, perfect rotoscope accuracy all the way through. It just needs to get the idea across because we're going to be distorting this and pushing the pixels around so much. Uh, in fact, speaking about pushing pixels around, we shot these on, on large settings, so I've got a lot of pixels I'm going to be pushing around. I'm going to put it into a very widescreen HD comp. So I've got a ton of pixels I can play with. So I can squash and stretch and pull this image apart and I'm not going to be destroying um, pixel information because I'm going to be down everything in the end. So, hey, it still works. Beautiful. All right, so click over here, left side, Apple Shift C to pre-compose. Left comp one is perfect. We want to move the attributes. Open this up. Perfect. Look at that. All right, we're going to take our pan behind tool, click and drag, hold Shift to do a straight line. We're going to take it just off frame. It's just a little bit out. We're going to hit S to bring up the scale, unlink them. All right, and we're going to bring the height up a little bit, kind of like that. Perfect. We don't want it to go over. And then we're going to bring it out like so. Perfect. Now if I go ahead and bring that up, uh, turn on, on the transparency, we can see that it's not touching any of the corners. Yeah, it is over here, but that doesn't really matter because as soon as I throw my corner pin effect on, I am going to be reshaping it anyways. So corner pin effect basically puts a corner or a pin on each corner and you can drag those around to reshape it. So strain that out a little bit and we're going to go ahead and stretch this sucker out even more. Perfect. And we're going to reselect our corner pin. I know it's getting a little small there to see, but you get the general gist at the moment of what I'm doing. And we'll stretch it again. Now the reason why I'm uh, doing this technique uh, this way is because as soon as I pull these corner pins up, the image starts to move back. So I've got it about where it needs to be here. I really don't need to do much more to it. I'm going to select this and Apple Shift C, pre-compose it again, move all the attributes. And now when I redrop on my corner pin, it's in these corners versus the corner that was way out here somewhere. So now it's going to be a little bit easier to get this closer to the corner. So I'm not actually putting it in the corner. I'm getting it close, as you can see there. I'm going to go down here, do the same with this one. And uh, I'll show you why we're not actually putting it in the corner yet. Um, if I move out here, I want you guys to watch this top corner as I'm moving this bottom pin around. See how it's shifting a lot? Well, that's not going to be good when we're trying to get it perfectly into the corners. That's going to destroy the entire effect. So I'm going to get these as close as I can, like I'm doing right here. Same on this side. Oh, a little bit too far there. Perfect. All right, now that that's done, I'm going to pre-compose again, Apple Shift C, make a new pre-comp. And you guessed it, add corner pin on again. This time, we're going to zoom in really close, press the tilde key again, and we're going to get these suckers right into the corners. Now, it's OK if it overlaps just a little. That's totally fine, just a little bit. I mean, we're losing maybe a pixel of information. Um, but we want to make sure that there is no, I lost my corner pin, select it to see it. We want to make sure that there is no transparency. Um, going on with the image. We want to make sure it takes up the entirety of the frame. It's very important. And we drag that in and bam, look at that. That is one wall stretched out onto the full size of the frame. Now we're going to re, we're going to pre-compose this one more time, Apple Shift C, and this time we're going to go Apple K or composition, composition settings and I'm going to make it the right aspect ratio. Now I measured the room and one wall is eight foot by 11 foot and the other wall is eight foot by 12 foot. 
Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and use 8 foot by 11 foot. So width would be 11 and height would be 8, not B, 8. I'm going to lock the aspect ratio and now I'm going to turn the width into 1080. Sorry, the height into 1080. There we go. All right, click OK. And then we're going to right click on our footage and go transform, fit to comp. Now this is making it the correct aspect ratio. This is going to be very important later on. And now we're going to do everything we just did to the left comp, or to the left wall, onto the right wall. So I'm going to go ahead and just speed through this. You guys can watch it kind of quickly while I'm doing this. So this is what we're left with. We have a left wall and a right wall that are the correct aspect ratio of the room and roughly HD resolution. So what I need to do is I need to change this comp into HD resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and I knew it was 1485 by 1080 and then because it's too wide I'm going to times 2. Click OK. And there we go. There is our comp, and I'm going to slide this over, holding shift to make sure it goes straight across, and drag this one in, and we see that it's a little bit off. I'm going to select it, and using the arrow keys, I'm actually going to slide her right into place. This needs to go over a little bit to the right, and I'm going to just take both of these and scale them up to 101%. I'm going to go to an area where Mike Sedino is actually in the middle of the comp. Take this down a quarter just so I can see it, where the line is. So I can kind of line it up right. There we go, that's about right. And we'll bring the resolution back to full just because we kind of need to know exactly what's going on here. Come on. And yeah, this is kind of render heavy, so just keep that in mind. Now because of the perspective issues, it's not going to line up perfectly, but we can get it very close. Like that. That looks about right. Maybe I can slide it out a little. Yeah, we're buried there. There we go. Uh, maybe one more. So that lined it up held the key to get out of here and there we go that's day one I did this for the other four days that he was there um, wound up actually only being three days I take that back the uh, the fourth day he was doing another uh, mural inside the closet that is how we did the mural time-lapse effect um, now this effect can be used for anything where you need to isolate a wall and you know maybe write something onto the wall um, there's a lot of tutorials like anti-stabilization tutorials, especially on Video Copilot. Uh, this is another technique that you can use for that. Um, so you can write on here without having to worry about perspective and then when you recompose it uh, back into your original footage, it will be shifted in, in the right perspective. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more tutorials and stuff like this, let us know. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. Biggest way to show some support right now is to share this video, get the word out, um, and we're going to be creating some more uh, tutorial based videos for you guys. Um, until then, check us out next week on Tuesday for another episode of Time Lapse Tuesdays, and check us out next week on Thursday for Time Crunch Thursdays, where we make a film in six hours. It's like a 48 hour film festival on steroids. Pretty awesome. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.